Well, good morning. Good to see each one of you here today. Uh, thank you for coming out on this rainy Sunday morning. Boy, the boy, it's good to see somebody I hadn't seen in a long time. I'm a golly. It's uh, good to have you with us. And good to have each one. Good to have Wayne and Catherine back here. Boy, you've uh, so good to, good to see them here. Uh, and everyone else. And good to have uh, Pat and Peggy's grandson with us. Wilson. You know, my uh, grandchildren are named Kaylin and KJ Wilson. Just went, got back from seeing them last week, and several years ago, uh, they started playing basketball. So we got them a basketball each. Got a blue one and a pink one, and they opened it. And they were just so proud of it, and I got a picture of it, and they're holding the basketball, and said, Mom, Dad, look. They put my name on this basketball. <laughs> it's a Wilson basketball. They thought that was the coolest thing. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm sure you've got some Wilson balls in your house somewhere. But it's good to have y'all with us. It, uh, I tell you, if you would, let's bow, uh, bow our heads. Almighty God, we uh, come before you today. Lord, just thanking you for all the blessings of life. We thank you for the uh, for the ability to get here on a cold and rainy Sunday morning. But more than that, Lord, we thank you for the desire that you uh, lit in our hearts to want to come and be with your people and be in your presence here today. Lord, I ask that you would just bless everything that's said and done here, that it would bring honor and praise and glory to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, if you would turn in your hymnals for our call to worship today, it would be number 171. Most of you know it and don't need it, need it, but we're going to sing through that. We'll sing through it one time. Boy, don't you miss Stan? <laughs> I know I do. This is uh, familiar territory for me, but I've, uh, I've certainly been uh, blessed since Stan's been here not having to lead the music, but I'm going to do the best I can today. And y'all pray for me and help me and, uh, and sing out. And I think you may know that Stan has been in the hospital. Uh, uh, Wednesday got out yesterday. Uh, Going to have to go back. Uh, for surgery on his appendix, but he's, uh, I saw him last night, and he looked pretty tired, so he's supposed to be watching today, and uh, speak of the devil. <laughs> yeah, good morning. We were just uh, giving a little update on Stan, and uh, yeah, I trust he's still doing well today. Good deal. Hopefully he'll get rested back and uh, be back with us hopefully next week and um, so uh, before I get into the announcements I got a, I, I did a shorter sermon today on purpose and, and I guess I'm glad uh, I got so much to tell you, so much to, to share with you uh, I, I just want to say uh, 
at uh, watching last week's worship service uh, was one of the biggest blessings that I've had in a long time. I, I thought it was wonderful. If you weren't here last week, I encourage you to go online. Uh, it's uh, you should be able to find it and uh, and watch it. It was it was a wonderful, wonderful worship service, and I and I commend you for that. Uh, there was a big church uh, in Montgomery where I lived, not far from my house, and they had uh, a senior pastor and three associate pastors. They had about 2,000 folks uh, there uh, on Sunday when the senior pastor preached. And when the associate pastors preached, they had about 11 to 1,200 people that would be there. And so I, I was wondering how many uh, folks would would be here last week, New Year's Day, uh, celebrating on New Year's Eve. You know, it's not great weather. I, I was blessed uh, to see that there were about 35% more people here last week than they were on my last Sunday. <laughs> so I want to commend you for that. And I want to commend everybody for being here today. Uh, it, it, it just blesses my heart. Uh, to know that uh, that we have a congregation here that uh, wants to serve God and worship Him. And, and, and I just want to commend you for that. Um, I may save the rest for later, I guess. Uh, I tell you, I, I, I'm, I, just, I just feel so blessed today and just everything that's happened over the last week. And... Uh, just some announcements. Uh, we have uh, Bible study Sunday school at 9.15. Uh, hopefully Stan will be back next week, uh, continuing on in our study at Perfect Brew. It's a coffee, ha coffee shop uh, Bible study. Uh, and then the basic Bible study on Wednesday uh, mornings at 10 a.m. Uh, meets at Marie, uh, at Elaine Hefner's house. And you can see her or Marie if you need the directions. It's 210 Mountain Lake Circle in Lee Estates, Rainbow City. Uh, tonight, we have our first Sunday night singing at 5 p.m. tonight. We will not have uh, choir practice today at 4 as we announced last week, I think. No, no practice. I'm not leading <laughs> choir practice. I don't know how to do this. I can't, I can't do that. So no, no choir practice tonight. Uh, the ladies' lunch is going to be on the 19th. I think that's a week from Thursday. And the last I heard is the location is to be determined. Probably announce that next week. <coughs> so ladies' lunch at 11 a.m. January the 19th. Mark your calendars. Uh, and our Thursday night devotion is at 7 p.m. Uh, you can log on to our Facebook page, Fort Bend church or dial in from home and on the the announcement sheet is back there on that little stand as you come in the door uh, and it's got all the contact information if you want to join us on Thursday nights and how to get there if, if you don't know text me or Joey or that's the best or Jerry or whoever then that's how you can get into that We'd love to have you. Had a, had a great time this past Thursday night, as we do most every Thursday. And I know I promised a calendar this week. Oh, me. <laughs> we'll work on that. Maybe we'll get it out next week. I, I, I can help. I can help you with it. <coughs> we'll get that. Don't fret. Oh, I've already done that. Yeah, it's. Uh, Jerry made me stop. He said, "Turn it up. Stop." <laughs> Yeah, when I try to do something in a Word document, boy, I tell you what. Oh, this was in Excel. I know. <clears throat> I'm just saying, for me, it's just Word. That just <laughs> drives me nuts. Okay, any other announcements? Right after church today, I need the ladies to stay for just a minute, just a quick discussion about what's going on in the church. I just want to give everybody a heads up on how we're going to kind of do that to make it simple. 
So the ladies can call that out. This is going to be mostly the ladies that I talked to about that. I won't take a minute to tell you. Okay. You going to do it in here, Fellowship Hall? Just here. We're going to do it in here. Okay. Up here in the front. Gather, gather down here after we're done today. Any other announcements? Yes, ma'am. I would like to thank everyone for our prayer for us, and I'm thankful to be here today. Amen. Amen. <coughs> we are uh, we're glad to hear, glad to see you here for sure. Any other announcements? I think that's it. I have a, uh, along with the calendar, I have uh, the year plotted out uh, for every Sunday and the special Sundays all the way through uh, December 31st of this year. And we'll probably get that, hopefully get that out to you next week. We need to fine tune it a little bit just uh, so everybody will be on the same page there. Any other? How about prayer requests? My youngest daughter, Tammy, is having a fusion of her neck in the morning. The vertebrae is herniated. And she's having surgery tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Uh, of course, we want to remember Stan, he recovers and the upcoming surgery. And, well, remember Sheila, uh, she's hoping to get her test results this week and uh, want to continue to remember uh, John Minton and the family. Uh, had a good visit with him yesterday and uh, all in all, I think John's doing well. But, uh, you know, a, a phone call, a text, uh, a visit would be nice. Uh, uh, he, uh, uh, his family's been taking real good care of him. And, uh, we took him some soup yesterday, so uh, all in all, I think John's doing okay. Let's we'll just, just remember that. And others? I remember Pam Warley. She's had a, a bunch of cats coming this Friday. We still need John's prayer. Certainly. Any others? Just a reminder to keep Mark Collins yes. in prayers and his family. And um, a friend I asked for prayers for a while back, Deva Browning, she got a good report from her heart cap that um, they're going to have to either do probably a heart ablation or a taste thing. Uh, if you would uh, remember a couple of specific adoptions that are going about right now. Uh, I'm not going to mention the, the names, but uh, God knows who it is. Any others? Okay. How about an unspoken prayer? Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, Sherry's going to play softly. I invite you to join me in a time of prayer, and, and we'll close with the Lord's Prayer afterwards. Let's bow our heads. Lord, we come before you today lifting up our hearts in prayer. We know full well that uh, you know everything in our hearts and our minds and what our desires are. Lord, we lift up the names that have been mentioned today. Lord, especially the, the unspoken 
prayers represented by the lifted hands. For we know, we have seen the proof that prayer works. We know that you hear our prayers. And Lord, today we thank you for loving us that much that, that you would know the deepest desires of our hearts. Lord, for any way that we may have come up short, fallen short of that mark that you have given to us, or we come to you with repentant hearts, we admittedly turn away from our sins, turn our face back towards you. Lord, we want to live a righteous life, one that, that honors you and all that you have done for us. Lord, for any way we failed you, we are truly sorry. Lord, today we are so thankful for the salvation that we have because of our relationship with your son Jesus. We have just celebrated his birth and Today we celebrate the visit of the Magi and what that represents. But we're thankful that Jesus came to save us all. We know that you are no respecter of person, that, that you love each and every person on the face of this earth. And Lord, we pray that, that many more today would come to salvation. Lord, hear us now as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you all to turn your red hymnals to number 881, if you need it like I do. And uh, join me in affirming our faith as we recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I think we will sing now. Oh, yeah. How about uh, if we start with number, I think it's 504. Is that, no, that's not it. 526. 526. 526. We'll sing all three verses. What?
back to number 454, 454, open my eyes that I may see. So we'll sing all three verses. <clears throat> Dear Lord, I thank you for all the good and perfect gifts you've sent our way. Lord, at this time, we ask you to bless these tithes and offerings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
We're going to be reading Matthew chapter 2 here in just a minute. Uh, we mentioned in Sunday school this morning uh, about God watching over us and blessing us and how God's timing is perfect. Uh, on our trip out to Texas, we were closing in on Dallas and decided to stop a couple exits before we usually stop and got gas. I was concerned about getting there, making it there, and if something were to happen, I might run out of gas. So I stopped and got gas, we got back on the interstate. One mile down the road, I see taillights, brake lights. Stopped. And after a minute, it all started to move. We all got over to the left hand lane and went around a bad wreck. And a tractor trailer wheels were on top of another car. Uh, door, driver door was open and it looked like somebody was talking to the driver in there. Uh, it was a bad situation. Never really heard what happened, but it was a bad deal. You know, it got me to thinking, what if I didn't stop and get gas? Very easily could have been us underneath that car, underneath that truck. And so we went and we had our visit. And on my last, our last day of the visit there, I was out in the, there was a grassy area in front of my grand. Uh, children's house and in a, in a nice neighborhood and we were out there throwing the football. That's all he wanted to do. My arm is still sore. <laughs> Bet you I threw it a thousand times. And uh, so we were out there and it was, uh, it was nice weather. He was in bare feet and running on the nice grass. And I saw this car up the next house up the street adjacent to where the grassy area where we were, got out and turned toward us, went down to, there's a cul-de-sac right there. That's odd. I mean, who turns around, out of the, goes out of their driveway and goes turns around before they leave? They went down and turned around the cul-de-sac and came back and stopped right here in front of us, rolled down the window. And this uh, older woman uh, looked at me and, and she said, sir, I want to know does the love of Jesus live in your heart? <laughs> and that's the first thing that she said. I've never seen this lady before in my life. So my grandson's standing there with me, and I said, well, ma'am, uh, as a matter of fact, he does. And, uh, and has for uh, about 45 years or, or more. And, uh, and she looked, and I just had no idea where this was going. She looked at me and said, you know, I knew it. She goes, looking out the windows in my house, seeing you play with your grandchildren, I could just tell that you were a Jesus lover. And that, that just, that just man, hit me like a ton of bricks. I said, I, so uh, we, uh, we had a long conversation. And she talked to my grandson, KJ. And, and, and you know, KJ, he's nine. You know, he knows everything. He, he, he's, I mean, he's the greatest video game player in the world. And, and you know, he's a typical fourth grader. And I'll tell you what, he spoke to that woman like he was 30 years old, respectful, just perfect answers, a gentleman. Boy, I'll tell you what, it just made me so proud. But, but we, we just talked, and she just said that she was... A, she was a woman that's been anointed by God. She said, I'm not a pastor, I'm not a prophet, um, but uh, I, I feel like that, that God speaks to me. And she goes, I just want you to know right now. And, and I told her, I said, we're, we're from Alabama and we're heading back tomorrow. And, and, and she said, I just want you to know 
that I'm going to be praying from now until you get home tomorrow that God will send four angels to come down and surround the four corners of your vehicle on your way home so that you will be home safely. Amen. And I mean, I'm just, I, I, I just didn't know what to say. I mean, she, we just, but we had a great conversation. What a wonderful lady. I think her name was Miss Barnes. Mary Jean's got her card. Deborah Barnes. And uh, right after we left, not long after that, was our time to leave the grandkids. We left. We went up the road, and we're heading home, uh, heading back to the hotel. And Mary Jean says, well, look at that doggy park over there. There's a bunch of dogs running around. So... So we whipped in this little, uh, it was a little strip center there, but it was a blank place on the end. There was a bunch of dogs. We stopped and looked at the dogs about 30 seconds, got back on the road, and, and this little neighborhood road's a six lane. So three lanes going this way. And so we go one block from there, and uh, we, we pull up behind the car, and I notice somebody stopped. And this lady gets out, and she starts running toward the intersection, right up in front of her. Then I noticed there was a van that was on its side, and another car smashed on its side, and a big wreck that happened right there. And I just thought right then, what if we hadn't stopped at that doggy daycare for 30 seconds? It could have just as easily have been us on the side with a crashed car. That lady didn't pray language, I, I'm telling you, Robert, it, it, just, it just humbled me. I'm telling you, it humbled me right there. And I just wanted you to hear that, Dave. You don't hear anything else here today. I, I believe that God sends his angels to protect us. We know for sure that our oldest son, Brett, has, has, a, has a whole legion of guardian angels around him in his lifetime. It, it's just... It was just a blessing. Uh, it, it, it really was. And it, it just, and I want to tell you, we got up the next day. We uh, got on the interstate, drove 700 miles, blue skies, and not one issue. It was smooth sailing, not, not even, no traffic. No, it was just a, just a great, gentle ride all the way to Asheville, Alabama. And I thought about Miss Barnes, and, and, and I'm, just, I'm thankful for the angels that protected us and got us home. It was just, I mean, that just came out of, the, out of nowhere. And, uh, and I, I'm, I'm thankful that uh, there's a godly family across the street for my grandkids that's going to be praying. She said that she's going to be praying for them and their protection. And, uh, and I'll tell you what, in this world, they need it. I just want to share that with you today. Well, today is the first Sunday after Epiphany, uh, which was Friday, January the 6th. And uh, Epiphany, if you didn't know for sure, is defined as the manifestation of Christ to the Gentiles as represented by the Magi, <clears throat> or as they are often referred to is the wise men. Epiphany is the 12th day of Christmas, as Joey posted and let us know. Originally, decorations went up on Christmas Eve and stayed up until Epiphany had ended. Gifts were given on each of the 12 days, hence the 12 days of Christmas. I mean, who, who in the, their right mind waits to Christmas Eve to put their decorations up? I mean, they should go up the day after Halloween in my book. <laughs> but, so as of Friday, at least spiritually speaking, the celebration of Christmas ended. And uh, soon uh, after, actually on February 22nd of this year, is Ash Wednesday, which will start the beginning of Lent. So we go pretty quickly from celebrating his birth to celebrating his resurrection about 15 weeks from Christmas Day to Easter Sunday. It's hard to believe when you look at it in those terms. In between, we are confronted with our sin and horror of the crucifixion. It's only 15 weeks from Christmas Day. 
till Easter Sunday, 13 weeks from today. That was a little excerpt from Robin Scott's post from uh, Friday, and I uh, thought it condensed it really well of what epiphany really means. And as I said, uh, I'm going to read to you the, the scripture that goes along with this. It's in Matthew chapter 2, starting in verse 1. It says, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born the king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. Verse 3 says, When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet Micah has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. When Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them exactly the exact time the star had appeared, he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. For as soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. Verse 9 says, After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When, the, when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. <clears throat> on coming to the house, they saw the child and his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. They opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. thought that it was really nice that I believe Elaine mentioned that about saying thanks be to God uh, in honor of Susan, Susan and her memory. I'm sure that in that scripture you picked up on some of the spoilers so far of what we have believed. The wise men, not kings, visited Jesus on or before his second birthday. They did not visit Jesus at the manger scene where he was born like the shepherds did. They came to meet the newborn king of the Jews bearing gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. These magi are wise men. I believe that's why we sing We Three Kings because there were three gifts mentioned. These magi represents the world. There were definitely Gentiles of some country other than Israel. And folks, I believe that they represent us coming to acknowledge the Messiah as Savior of the world, not just the Savior of the Jewish people. I'm sure that you have heard the catchy phrase mentioned around the Christmas season that says, wise men still seek him. That saying may be one of the most significant words of wisdom for all the world to hear, and we should be saying it more often. I really believe that. Why is it, I wonder, that the people of the world refuse to open their eyes and see the true light of the world that has overcome darkness? Why is it, I wonder, that some people reject the path to eternal life that Jesus has shown us. Why is it, I wonder, that the people of the world refuse to acknowledge the truth that Jesus came and proclaimed with power? Why is it, I wonder, that Jesus, that people of this world stubbornly and misguidedly refuse to follow the perfect way that Jesus offers us to eternal life through repentance, forgiveness, that leads to salvation. 
Yet three magi from distant lands saw a star, and they believed. This really should not surprise us. The Bible said this would happen, and it continues today. John chapter 1 says this in verse 9. It says, The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. You know, sadly, even those people who met Jesus and saw the miracles that he performed did not accept him and believe him. So it's not surprising that people today who read and hear about him would reject Jesus as well. Pride and arrogance sometimes clouds the mind and affects one's judgment. Very sad to say, but so many fall into this category. There is a bright side to the same story for those of us who do believe and do acknowledge Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life. We, my friends, I'm proud to say, have seen the light. John continues in verse 12. He says, Yet to all who receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. Amen. Those of us who have accepted Jesus as the Savior of the world, just as we read in the Bible, have the honor, privilege, and responsibility of being called the children of God. Because of our decision to accept Jesus as the Savior of the world and the Son of God, we are now adopted into the family of God for all eternity. No matter what happens to me in this world, I know where I will one day spend eternity in the presence of God and singing with Sherry at Jesus' feet. And for those of you who don't know what that means, Sherry sings a song about singing at Jesus' feet. What's the name of that? Look for me. Beautiful, beautiful song. Yeah. So many times in my 10 years here at Horton Bend, I feel like I've been preaching to the choir. Uh, I, I look around here and I see uh, the folks and the lives that you live, know how you feel in your heart about Jesus. Uh, you know, sometimes I think, well, you know, what am I going to say? But how simple today's message was that, that we're in that family. That we're in that family that received Jesus and all that, that he meant to do on this earth. We believe it all. That Jesus is the Son of God. That today he sits, just like we said in the Apostles' Creed, he sits at God's right hand today looking down on us, interceding for us in all that we do. I believe right now that they are watching this worship service and seeing all that we're doing. They know every thought that's gone through your minds during this worship service and that you're here not for any other reason but to worship and honor them. And that's why we're here today. As you can see, we, we have communion set up. And uh, one thing that I, I want to remind everyone is that uh, the Lord's table is open to all. I know that there are, are some churches out there who 
exclude some people, uh, not criticizing them. They can do what they want to do. But here, everyone here is welcome. And uh, after we go through our liturgy, and we're going to be in the red hymnal. Sorry, I don't have a red one, but this is what they gave me. Uh, on, on page 12, I believe, it's Word and Table, Service 2. And just a, a few housekeeping words. Uh, we'll, uh, when we get finished reading here, and uh, we'll, uh, I'll invite Pat and Cherry to come down. I forgot to tell them before service if they would play during communion, but I, I, I figure they can wing it. You think, Jay? I believe they can. And uh, I think Mary Jean and I are going to serve today. Um, but uh, so they'll come down and we'll, we'll serve them. Then we'll get ready. And we'll stand on your right side. And what we'll do is we'll go start front to the back. You go down the, the far wall. Come down here. Put your cups in the tray here uh, along the altar rail. And then you can go back. And then when... Clarence, you will, well, Jerry, like Jerry and Jay, or they'll follow Clarence, and, and, and then you'll go right back behind Beth. You'll follow Beth down the wall, and then this side will go. I think we all got that. It doesn't matter which way you go. We're going to serve you communion. <clears throat> okay. If you're on, uh, I think I covered everything. Um, on the uh, on page 12 uh, the invitation says Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another therefore let us confess our sin before God and one another merciful God we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart we have failed to be an obedient church we have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Forgive us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. If you'll move to the next page of the Great Thanksgiving, middle of the page. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ by the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection. You gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 
And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Father Almighty, now and forever. Amen. This time I would invite those who are helping to join me. After you receive the elements, you're welcome to come to the altar to pray or sit on the front row, whatever, whatever you feel comfortable doing. I would invite all to come as you feel led.
I believe everybody came through the line. Did we miss anyone? Be happy to bring it to you if we did. I think we, everybody came through. Um, the second Sunday of 2023, hard to believe. The year's flying by already. Um, it's my sincere hope uh, that this year uh, is half as good as last year was for me. Uh, I've had a, a week to really sit back and think about 2022, and it was one of the most blessed years of, of my life. All the things that happened, even with the bad things that happened, God has been good. And uh, I believe that God is going to reward our faithfulness and our uh, desire to serve Him. And, uh, and I am just praying that, that God will bless you in a rich and wonderful way this year. And I want to thank you for making our service uh, wonderful today. Does anybody have the word, a word they want to share before we, before we close? Bonnie's not here, so. Um, I'm going to close with a prayer. And, uh, uh, and then we'll have our meeting. No one has, has anything they want to say. All right, let's bow our heads. Almighty God, thank you for your presence here and blessing upon this gathering today. Lord, I ask your uh, protection upon us as we travel home today. And Lord, give us the strength to turn around and come back here tonight at 5 o'clock and sing praises to your name and gather in fellowship with one another. Uh, what a blessing that that's going to be. And we're looking forward to it. We thank you for watching over this past week. And Lord, uh, watch over us today and in the days ahead. Lord, we thank you for giving us that burning desire in our hearts to serve you. For all these things we ask in Jesus' precious name. And everyone said? Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.